Hello everybody! In this video, we're going to look at crowdsourcing and citizen science, which is a topic that shows up in the APCSP exam, and you're going to see some practice questions as well. If you only want to look at those practice questions, please skip ahead now. Crowdsourcing. So crowdsourcing can be defined as getting some sort of input from many, many sources. So not one, not two, not three, but many, 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 many people. And for the purposes of the APCSP exam, that input is usually going to be via the internet. Crowdsourcing can take many forms. One famous example is the Amber Alert, where the location of missing children is what's crowdsourced. This is an ad from Canada for the Amber Alert, which really forces you to think about some of the stereotypes you might have. Uber is crowdsourcing, where we are crowdsourcing drivers. Waze is another example, where we are crowdsourcing car and police locations, as well as information about accidents. We have Yelp, or TripAdvisor, or Google Reviews, where we are crowdsourcing reviews, as well as photos. Verbo, or Airbnb, where we are crowdsourcing places to rent. And finally, you have stuff like Kickstarter, or Patreon, or Indiegogo, or GoFundMe, or Give, Send, Go, where you are crowdsourcing money. Sometimes you'll see this referred to as crowdfunding, especially if you're looking at the Khan Academy curriculum, but it's not a vocab word that shows up in the APCSP exam. As far as the exam goes, from all the practice questions that I've seen, you want to be able to recognize if something they give you is an example of crowdsourcing, and you want to be able to identify if something would be a good candidate for crowdsourcing. And with that, you want to remember the definition of crowdsourcing, which is when we get input from many, 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 potentially huge number of people over the internet. And it might help you to think about the examples of crowdsourcing, and I've listed the ones I went over here. On top of that, I've added Wikipedia, which is also another famous example of crowdsourcing. Citizen science is another term that's going to be on the APCSB exam. And all it really is is a specific type of crowdsourcing that has to do with science. And as with crowdsourcing, we want to remember that we have contributions from many, 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 many people. Here are some examples of citizen science. This is a COVID-19 school response dashboard where the spread of COVID-19 in schools was tracked using crowdsourced data. This was a project of Emily Oster. I think interestingly enough, this project found that COVID-19 was not really being spread in schools, but nevertheless, schools were closed for a long, long, long time. Ah, this right here is probably the most famous citizen science project of all time. It's SETI at Home, where citizens who had computers that were idle were given little bits of data to analyze from scientists to search for extraterrestrial life. If you're looking to participate in a citizen science project, you can go to SciStarter webpage and there's all sorts of projects on this page. Here's one that's been popular for a couple of years now. It's called Globe at Night and it measures light pollution with crowdsourced data. And this is how it works. You either on your app or on a computer, fill out your observations of the stars along with geographical data, time data, meteorological data, that kind of thing, and then scientists analyze that data later. With respect to the exam, there's a couple of trends that I've seen in the practice questions, and I'll go over those now. The first is that you should recognize that citizen science is a type of crowdsourcing. So that means you need contributions from many, many, many people via the internet. And the next thing you want to be able to do is recognize when citizen science is going to be a good thing or an appropriate tool to use and when it's not going to be an appropriate tool to use. So you'll want to use citizen science if you have far-reaching geography, if you need data from far-reaching geography, and you need tons and tons of data. These are conditions that lead themselves to you wanting to use citizen science. Why? Because no matter how good the scientists are, they're not going to be able to get all of this data from all over the world. So you'll take, you know, maybe a little bit less skill in return for getting all the data that you need. At the same time, there are certain conditions where it's really, really bad idea to use citizen science. So anytime I have high skill required, fancy equipment, a lot of money, these are all bad conditions for citizen science. So if I'm asking normal, regular people to analyze data, to use ultrasound, or work in a fancy lab, to go buy stuff, that's going to be a hard no for citizen science. When you're taking the APCSP exam, you want to keep these factors in mind. Here are your practice questions. 1. UrbanDictionary.com is an online dictionary that allows anybody to update its entries. One of these is most true. So right away, we should see when we're talking about crowdsourcing, we're talking about input or money from many, 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 many people. We can see the D is our answer. D, Urban Dictionary, is an example of crowdsourcing. With the AP board, you want to remember that these definitions are narrow. So you don't want to see things that aren't really there. Heuristics, parallel computing, undecidable problems have nothing to do with getting input from many, many, many people. The only one here that might be a little bit tricky is the digital divide. Remember, the digital divide has to do with internet access or computing knowledge 
and what we do to reduce that gap between rural and urban, old and young, that kind of thing. Or education about urban words is not really what we're looking for when we talk about the digital divide. So our answer is D. Question two, which of the following would benefit from crowdsourcing? One, an online wiki. Online wikis like Wikipedia are classic examples of crowdsourcing. This one is definitely true. Two, an online ticket purchasing system. So this one might be a little bit tricky. When we're talking about something like Indiegogo, when the product doesn't exist but needs your funding to come to market, that's an example of crowdsourcing or crowdfunding. When we're talking about just regular sales, it doesn't need your contributions to come to market, like Amazon or Walmart, say, then that's not crowdsourcing. So we're going to say two is a no. Three, an online application. This works whether or not it gets input from many people. So the answer here is also no. So our answer here is A1 only. Question three, which of the following is the best example of crowdsourcing? A, Starlink designed to bring cheap internet to rural areas. No, this is an example of helping the digital divide, so it's not it. B, Microsoft's MakeCode Arcade designed to teach programming. No, this is just an example of education, so it's not it either. C, Uber Eats, which finds food delivery drivers. Here's what we're looking for. What we're crowdsourcing here is drivers, delivery drivers, so your answer is C. D, Roblox preventing in-game chat. This you could call whatever you wanted, maybe safety. I don't know, but it's not crowdsourcing. So again, your answer here is C. Question four, two of the following are true. Select two. So, so far, we haven't given this type of question yet, but in the AP exam, there are definitely questions where you have to select two answers. Not three, not four, not one, but two. So select two of these that are true. A, crowdsourcing information can be a great way of getting information when you need information from all over the world. This is definitely true. It's one of the main reasons why we will use crowdsourcing. B, crowdsourcing has an advantage over conventional information gathering and as the quality of information is usually excellent. This is definitely not true. It is a big disadvantage of crowdsourcing information. You're having regular people get your information for you, not trained scientists, not trained information gatherers. So B is not true. C, crowdsourcing is a great tool for organizations that engage in private projects, such as the NSA and CIA. This is definitely not true. If you're crowdsourcing, almost by definition, you're giving away kind of what you're doing. And if you're the NSA or CIA, you don't want to be doing that. So C is not true. D, crowdsourcing information could be potentially a lot less expensive than conventional ways of getting information. So this is a little bit related to B, in that you're not hiring you know, survey people or scientists to give you your information. You're getting information from regular plebs, and that's going to be a lot cheaper. So usually, crowdsourced information is cheaper. So the answers we're looking for are A and D. Question 5. A scientist has people from all over the world take photos of ants. These photos are taken over many years and are used to study the population of ants. This entire process can be described as which of the following? 1. Crowdsourcing. Well, it's definitely crowdsourcing. You have photos from all over the world. So A is true. Two, citizen science. This is definitely a canonical example of citizen science. You have a scientist who is running the whole thing, getting data from regular people from all over the world over many years in locations that the scientist would never be able to get to themselves. When you think of citizen science, you think of something just like this. So two is definitely true. Three, a heuristic. This is one of those times when the AP board will throw these definitions at you just to try to confuse you, but it's not that. So because one and two are true, the answer is B. One and two only. Question six. This is a crowdsourcing and citizen science question, and we need to select which of the items are true. Select two. Remember, on the exam, you'll have a few that say select two. A. Crowdsourcing allows Professor Oster to ensure quality and reliability of data. This is definitely not true. Remember, sometimes crowdsourced data can be sketchy data. B. Crowdsourced data allows Professor Oster to gather a lot more data more cheaply than if the team had gathered this data themselves. So part of the plus about using plebs to get your data is that they're not highly paid scientists. So this one is definitely true. C, using crowdsourced data allows Professor Oster to gather data that is evenly distributed. This is definitely not true. As much as you'd like evenly distributed data, citizen science is not going to give you that. You're going to get what you get and don't complain. That's how citizen science data works. So C is not true. D, using crowdsourced data allows Professor Oster to gather a lot of data from places that may be difficult for her and her team to visit and take data. This is definitely true and is one of the big advantages of crowdsourced data. You can get a lot of data from a lot of places that you wouldn't normally get. So the answers here are B and D. Question 7. Which of these are good examples of citizen science? 
We then document changes in bird distributions, pinpoint bird populations in need of conservation, and locate places to find new birds. This one is definitely true. This is a classic example of citizen science where we have cheap and low skilled crowdsource data from everywhere. This is actually a real example. This describes eBird, which is a real example of citizen science. Two, people take readings of bat populations with sonar and send this information to scientists. While right away, we know a regular person is not gonna have sonar. So this is not a good example of citizen science because a regular person does not have specialized equipment. Three, people look at the thermometers outside and send them to scientists who then document changes in temperature worldwide as a function of time. So again, this is cheap and low skilled data that you get from everywhere, and thus is a great example of citizen science. So our answers here are one and three, only C. Question eight, same question, but different examples. One, people buy mail order kits for $100, which are used to take temperatures to help scientists fight climate change. So this is not a good example of citizen science because it requires specialized equipment, which costs too much money. With that $100 barrier, you're not gonna get people to do your study. Two, people put their information and the number of hours they sleep that night into a free app as part of a sleep study. So this does fit the requirements of citizen science. It's cheap, low skilled, crowdsourced from everywhere. So this is good. Three, scientists from 10 top universities collaborate to find smaller particles than quarks and leptons. So this is collaboration and the data is from everywhere, but it's not really citizens. Scientists are not citizens. The skill required to be part of this is too high. So this is not really an example of citizen science. So your answer here is C2 only. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.